All right. We're going to call this regular monthly meeting to order of the Scarborough Sanitary District. Today is June 23rd, 2022. And we'll call the roll. Ben McDougall. Present. Mike Stein. Present. Jason Greenleaf. Here. And I'm Chairman Nick Rico. We have a quorum. Approval of the minutes. We have two sets. First, the regular monthly meeting minutes from May. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Thank you, Jason. Second. Thank you, Ben. Any additions, subtractions, corrections? Barring none, all in favor? None opposed? All right, now the benefit <laughs> workshop is a second set of minutes. I'll entertain a motion for that one. Thank you, Jason. Second. Thank you, Ben. Any corrections on that Mike. one? That oh, Mike. I'm sorry. That was on autopilot. That was Mike. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> uh, any corrections? All in favor? Not opposed. Okay. Superintendent's report. Okay. A copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of May. Uh, is included in the packet. Our average effluent flow for the month was 1.33 million gallons a day, and our effluent quality was, again, well within our permitted limits with averages of 95 and 99% removal for BOD and TSS uh, with concentrations in 13 and 3 milligrams per liter, respectively. Copy of the pump station flows for the month of May is also included in your packet. Uh, no issues or concerns. Been noted. Um, we went and visited the pilot test of the E load electro osmosis dehydrator. And it was uh, being operated at the uh, Igunquit wastewater treatment facility. This is a non thermal dryer uh, with reported K concentrations of up to 60%. Uh, we brought samples of our dewatered sludge for testing, but unfortunately, our sludge actually fared the worst of all the sludges in the southern Maine region that were tested with final cake concentration of 37%. I think, Nick, you reached almost 60%, did you not? We, may, we reached 63%. 63%. Um, at a capital cost of uh, $1.3 million, excluding engineering installation and an approximate electricity cost of $80,000 per year. <coughs> Um, this really isn't a viable option for the district at this point. Uh, so, it, but it is uh, with the increased costs in dewatering, I mean, sludge disposal, I thought it would, it was prudent to at least uh, uh, give this a, uh, an evaluation. Uh, we also completed a pilot test of the Fournier rotary press for dewatering um, this month. This is the same type of dewatering equipment we currently have installed at the treatment plant. And uh, Underwood and, and Associates will take these results, incorporate it into their evaluation, and in addition, in light of the recent price increases for sludge disposal, they will revisit their evaluation and update the report accordingly. I gave you a couple pictures of uh, both the, the uh, E-load electro osmosis dehydrator and the four-year pro, uh, press operation. And then uh, finally, um, HR Main Consulting distributed the benefit survey uh, that we had talked about during the workshop uh, to staff. And as soon as the results are finalized, a summary will be presented to the board. And that's all I have. Any questions for the superintendent? Go ahead, Mike. Um, refresh my memory, but when it comes to the flow at the treatment plant, how much does it increase in the summertime? Actually, not much, not if much? at all. Okay. Um, our flow is relatively consistent throughout the year. In, um, if anything, we might actually have a decline during the summer months, primarily due to dry weather oh, conditions. Okay, true. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, moving on, correspondence. 
Um, <clears throat> Casella sent the district a letter outlining an immediate cost increase of our current contract. Excuse me. Of our current contract due to the passing and implementation of LD 1911. Our disposal costs will st uh, starting August 8th. Uh, will increase by the amount of $39.75 per wet ton, which equates to a 45% increase. With this increase, our, uh, dis our current disposal cost will increase $127.11 per wet ton. Um, just uh, consequently, you know, consequently, it's likely that we will overrun this line item budget. Um, and I include the copy of this letter for your purview. On, uh, on May 3rd, Fred Gallant of Maine DEP, uh, who is our new inspector after Matt Height has moved on and took another position with, uh, with the state. He conducted a, an inspection of the operations of the wastewater treatment facility. A copy of his, his report is attached. Um, Fred's noted observations, I think, best sums up his findings, which I have quoted below, and uh, quote, unquote, this appears to be a well-managed and well-run facility. The operators appear to be very knowledgeable of the facility and take pride in the work they are doing. The entire facility is neat, clean, and kept in good order. Uh, we issued an, uh, the attachability serve letter for a proposed credit union to be located on um, Tugin Road, uh, which was previously approved for a restaurant that was never built. And that's all I have for correspondence. Any questions about the correspondence? Go ahead, Ben. Regarding the increase in uh, costs with Casella, I know we discussed this a little bit last time, but we're <clears throat> we're reaching out to any other options to s make sure there's no lower cost options. I, I we have, and I've only found higher cost options. That's that's what I thought. I just I just want to be sure because obviously when people see these increases in their bills, we've got to make yeah. sure we can explain ourselves. Yeah. No. Um, me the. Uh, <coughs> REI, which is based out of New Hampshire, actually gave me a cost, and I can't remember the, the number off the top of my head, but it was either $165 per wet ton or $173 per wet ton. But it would call it 170 significantly more. So, Okay. And, and there's really no other option? Uh, Scarborough was part of a group of southern Maine towns and districts that got together and put the sludge disposal contract out to bid. It's usually done every five years. Now this one was for a three-year period. And started out with seven. Now we're up to 12. And there were three bidders. One decided not to bid at all. The other one bid on disposal only with no transport included. And then Casella was the only one that bid on both transport and disposal, and they were the lowest cost option. And because of LD 1911, everyone raised their prices accordingly. And they're still the cheaper, cheapest option out there right now. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Okay. Uh, old business. Um, attached is the draft easement to allow access and use of the, of, uh, the district property uh, directly behind the gray property on Black Point Road. Uh, this document is currently under review by Bernstein Shore. I recommend authorizing the superintendent to execute this easement pending any revisions as recommended by Bernstein Shore. And this is the easement that would um, allow um, Howard Gray, um, the property uh, um, at Howard Gray's, have rights of access across our property, um, primarily for direct access to the marsh. But um, we can also hunt on it and um, plant some trees if they want to. You can see and the subtle language in there. 
and let's remind the folks at home, this is a property that we had purchased from Mr. Gray years ago to expand the size of the treatment facility. Question, Ben? If I understand this right, uh, this, this easement is to Mr. Gray only, doesn't carry with the land or go to his heirs. This is for him to walk on the property, hunt and fish from the property, uh, and it would not carry to any heirs and wouldn't run with any other deeds? That's a good question, and that's why I, um, I would have to re-reference re the, uh, the, prop the easement language as it is right now. Um, I, see. I don't remember off the top of my head. What's that? Yes, we should. All right, let's do that first, and then we can discuss it. Okay. Thank you, Jason, for reminding me of my duty here. Um, so I'll entertain a motion to approve the easement for, to Mr. Gray so we can discuss it. Yeah. I'll, I'll make a motion to authorize the superintendent to execute the easement, heading uh, any revisions from the chair. Thank you, Jason. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mike. Okay, now we can discuss it. So, so as written, it does state directly to Howard Gray himself, not to the, it doesn't attach it to the actual property. So it would sunset if he sells the land, it sells his house and moves on then, yes? That's my understanding of it, okay. but I can clarify with that, and that with the attorney, and if that's the board's wishes, I can make sure that is, um, uh, with the attorneys that, that is the intent of the easement. Okay, go ahead, Jason. Uh, I was just going to say, I, I think that's a good idea that we put that stipulation in there. Um, who knows what happens in the future with that piece of property and if there's an open easement there and we need to access our property for reasons of expansion, um, and then that easement is not held up somewhere. It was one of the items I actually asked the attorneys to include in the easement is a, uh, a the district to have a right to uh, suspend this easement for no, no cause. cause. Okay. Okay. That probably supersedes anything that I just said then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, as long as it's clear that this easement is only for Mr. Gray himself and not to his heirs and assigns. Uh, it's not an easement in perpetuity. Uh, because if that was the case, I think we need to cons consider this more. But as far as uh, a, a limited easement to Mr. Gray alone that doesn't carry in perpetuity, I would support it. Mr. Gray and guess, or just Mr. Gray? I don't think we need to go there. Okay. Okay. So, as written and revised by Bernstein Shore to include a stipulation that it's only to Mr. Gray mm -hmm. and it's not a, an easement in perpetuity, I think we're all comfortable with that. And to include, as I stated, the... Um, the district has the right to, you know, to suspend the easement for with, without cause. Without cause. Okay, that works for me. Definitely comfortable with that. Any more comments or questions? Barring none. All in favor? None opposed. Thank you. And um, this next item, Mr. Gray hasn't really given us a price for the land yep. that he wants to buy. Let me uh, present it. Um, Mr. Gray had, uh, provided a, uh, a marked up drawing um, plan uh, for purchase. He is requesting a 100 foot by 200 foot parcel, which would bring his land area from 3.8 acres to 4.2 acres. And uh, um, as, I, as you had mentioned, he has not presented a price for that. 
um, to purchase that land. Um, but I guess at this point, um, if the board would like, if, if that land area is uh, within an acceptable size range for the for him to move forward with this, I guess we could, you know, I could advise him that way or not. Whether you, know, you want to make it smaller or. A, um, I don't think we need a motion to discuss that because we're not going to vote yeah. on anything. Yeah. So uh, I will open up the floor then to the rest of the trustees. What do you think about the proposed lot size? Go ahead, Mike. Um, at the previous meeting, not last one, but, but the one before, we are having a conversation about that, that four-acre threshold. Um, did we find out what was so magical about having four acres? Um, there was no magic to the four acres. I did speak to code um, to see if it opened this parcel up to any other developmental options, I guess, that going from 3.8 to 4 to 4.2, which is what this would bring it up to. Um, and it really doesn't trigger anything. Okay. Um, so... <clears throat> And I, and I asked, I actually brought that up to Howard when he came in and presented me the plan. And um, I, you know, I mentioned that, you know, I, I looked at 100, 100 by 200, is basically half acre, um, that that actually would be more than the four acres that he was originally had presented. And, you know, he says, yeah, I just, I thought 100 feet seemed like a good number. That's how he came up with it. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, did he elaborate on his ideas for the land or anything? His ideas? Yes. No. His, his purpose and goals to getting this? Just uh, to okay. get a little more land. Okay. Any more comments or questions? I think we'll just wait until he comes to us with a formal proposal. So okay, so we'll. Oh. I would en I would entertain the idea to sell it to him, but we, we need to try to understand the value. If we're uh, if we're going to sell land, we need to make sure. So the one hundred by two fifteen feet that he yeah. presented would be. I don't have a problem with the size lot. The size it's, of the lot. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of it's it's kind of a weird thing to get a fair market value of a landlocked piece of land like that, but we'll have to try to figure that out. It's really the value that it adds to his property. Yeah, right? I think that would be the... Not right. the value of the land that has a standalone yeah. piece. Well, he definitely won't want to pay that. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to want to pay what the value is to us, which yeah. isn't a lot with a little landlocked piece, and the, the answer will be somewhere in between. Yeah, I think that's right. Good point. Okay. I'll have that conversation with him. Thank you. New business? New business. Uh, oh, budget something. <laughs> Sorry. You have the five month budget summary. It's including the packet. I recommend approval. Move approval. Thank you, Jason. Second. Thank you, Ben. Any questions for the superintendent? Comments on the budget? Barring none, all in favor? None opposed. Public comments? Public is not interested in commenting right now. <clears throat> oh, comments. I think we'll start on the right this time. Jason? Sure. Uh, first, uh, just want to say it's uh, good to see uh, our new DEP inspector. Fred has similar mindset of Matt <laughs> and uh, those are great words to hear and again a sign of the, the hard work that the employees put in to keep that operation in good working order and neat and clean as he said so uh, thanks to all of the staff as always for everything that they do and uh, just wishing everybody a safe and happy 4th of July holiday. Cool. Mike? Um, I have to 
echo those those uh, same comments uh, with what uh, Fred Galan from the main DEP said uh, about the district appears to be well managed and well run facility those are um, nice words to hear and um, also I wish everyone uh, happy Fourth of July holiday cool Ben I don't think it matters who our DEP inspector is because our, our staff is great and it's a it's a well-run operation down there and I really appreciate that and yeah, hope everybody has a nice holiday oh uh, well said uh, you know I'll echo my trusty comments wish everyone a happy healthy safe fourth of July and entertain the final motion of the evening motion to adjourn thank you Jason second thank you Ben all in favor None opposed. Thank you.